あーっとここでハプニングだ急に画面が映らなくなってしまったぞそして何者かが空から決勝のステージに乱入この圧倒的な王そしてあのマントは間違いない電脳の破壊者ウォルテ WX だはい。Then we got Base GS, and then we got Classic Base and Super Base. Did I mention Super Base is one of the most powerful characters in the entire game right now? Seriously, that man is good at everything. And ever since then, they've been featuring good old Base in lots of different things, like the recent Dark Code capsule that just came out last week. So it's safe to say, Rockman X Dive is all about that Base, about that Base. And that trend continues today, as this week's Dive Fest is going to feature none other than Base EXE XX, the secret super boss that made his appearance in Mega Man Battle Network 4 and 5. Hey, is that one purple? Purple is my favorite color! However, Base XX could only be accessed by using the e reader peripheral for the Game Boy Advance. And that device didn't really catch on outside of Japan. In Battle Network 5's case, you could only encounter Base XX if you had Base Cross equipped, again by using the e reader. However, in Battle Network 5 Double Team DS, they did make it possible to obtain Base Cross by simply connecting your Game Boy Advance cartridge with a completed save with the Base icon. And then you could fight Base XX in your DS game. Oh, and as a little trivia as well, if you have the Wii U Virtual Console versions of Battle Network 4 and 5, in Battle Network 4, they added a little code you could put in on the title screen to actually unlock Base XX to fight. And then over in the Virtual Console version of Battle Network 5, they allowed you to activate the e reader code for Base Cross right off the bat, so you can fight him that way too. That's why I always say, if you want to play the Battle Network series, definitely try out the Virtual Console versions because they did a lot of nifty things like that to let you access all the content without any extra devices, peripherals, or having to trade with friends. My gut feeling is the Virtual Console versions are definitely going to be the base ROM that they use for an eventual Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection, if we get there. Just a reminder, too, if you are more of a person that likes to emulate, there are virtual console patches available through the Rockman EXE zone, so you can patch your ROM and you're off to the races. Other than that, there's not much else to say about Base XX. He's a purple boy, so I think I'm actually obligated to pull for him. But yeah, he doesn't have any story significance at all in the Battle Network series because he's just an optional secret boss. Gameplay wise, the most significant thing about Base XX was just the fact that he had an aura, unlike every other version of Base in Battle Network 4 and 5, which definitely made this base very tricky to deal with. Better bring those Northwind chips. And air hockey. Definitely air hockey. Either way, if Base EXE was based on Battle Networks 1, 2, and 3, and Base GS was based on Battle Network 3 after the main story, Then Base XX definitely is a good representation for Battle Networks 4 and 5, especially once we get into his moveset. Now we just need Base BX to represent Battle Network 6 base with the side beasts and all. Who knows, maybe we'll see that sooner than later, especially at the rate they're currently going. Isn't it wild that Base has the most alts now, outside of X and Zero? And of course, that is counting both his classic and EXE counterparts. We're up to five now. Five of them. Okay, enough history lessons for now. Speaking about Base XX's representation in Rockman X Dive, first of all, I really like the artwork. It is really, really nice. 
And actually, this is the first official artwork for Base XX, period. Unless you want to count some of the more artistic base artworks from the past. But for the most part, this is the first time we've had a clean character render for Base XX. And in the character select animation, we can see that Base XX thinks he's a Dragon Ball Z character now. Warping all around the place before dropping a spirit bomb on everybody. An evil spirit bomb. Alright, here come the skill sets. And I will say these two moves are arguably the most iconic moves that Base had in Bound Network 4 and 5. So it's really fitting. First up is Hell's Rolling. And yes, that is the official English localized name for that move. Base will drop some Hell's Rollings, which are circular discs of dark energy that once they touch the wall or terrain, they will bounce off it and go the other way along the floor. The bouncing effect seems to be more reliable than other characters that have a similar move from what I'm seeing. And they run pretty fast too, as they did in the original. Definitely a good skill to use in enclosed spaces, like in this PvP clip here with... <laughs> oh, oh, poor Mega Man EXE. Oh, sucks to be him. In the trailer, it's mentioned that when base hits a target with a weapon, he can reduce the cooldown time for Hell's Rolling by 2 seconds. Next up is that spirit bomb type attack I was talking about, Chaos Nightmare. This was essentially his desperation attack in Bound Network 4 and 5. It would track Mega Man EXE and attack his entire area, cracking all the panels. Chaos Nightmare was also featured in the Chaos Lord Giga Chip, which most people will probably remember that chip from Double Team DS just because you could literally just get it from the number trader. Similar to its Battle Network effect, Chaos Nightmare is simply a giant tracking ball of destruction. The original base EXE and dive actually has a similar skill to this, except we don't see this one splitting in four directions. It just turns into a big tornado-like explosion, dealing a ton of damage. Another passive skill reveal is that when base XX uses Hell's Rolling, he can reduce the cooldown time for Chaos Nightmare by two seconds. And lastly, you are going to notice that Base XX does retain his aura from his original appearance. The only difference is, this time, it protects him from both sides. The trailer specifically says, he gets a passive skill to absorb damage and gain an invincible shield, and can reset skills. Now, the big question is, does his shield last more than 2 seconds? Because that was a bit of a letdown with the previous two Base EXE forms. Regardless, it looks like Base XX is equipped to be able to just get out his skills all the time with little delay in between for some big damage. And obviously the shield helps too. As long as he has that damage output, he might be pretty decent at least for a Die Fest character since most Die Fest characters are pretty good. Except for Dark Mega Man EXE. Man, what a letdown. And speaking of Mega Man EXE, where's all of his alts at? Why are we only getting base EXE alts? Well, hold your horses, guys. There will be an answer to that very soon. Trademark copyright registered. Anyway, Base XX with Die Fest is coming out on November 17th this Wednesday. And obviously it will be one week until November 24th. The Battle Network celebrations have begun anew! On the 20th anniversary nonetheless. Wouldn't it be fitting if we got the other Battle Network 20th anniversary announcements about now, huh? Darn it, COVID. Also, I did notice something peculiar about the banner image in the trailer. It says S Base XX, but it's really just Base XX or Base EXE XX. Are they trying to say this is Super Base XX because he's purple? I mean, sure, I guess. <laughs> And that about wraps up our dive news. The only other thing you can expect, and this will probably be announced tomorrow anyway, is there's going to be a new boss rush event that's looking like. Other than that, yeah, enjoy Base XX. Are you guys going to pull for him? Let us know in the comments. Now let's wrap up this mega news roundup for today with some manga news. First up, Fukan, who is responsible for the Rockman EXE treasure box a while back, it's now coming out with another manga compilation based on the Mega Man 11 and Mega Man Star Force 3 one-shot mangas that Ryo Takamasaki did. 
The compilation is literally titled Ryo Takamazaki Rockman Works SSR, or in other words, Super Special Rare. And this package is rather nice because this is the first release of these mangas outside of their original Koro Koro Comics debut. Now keep in mind these are going to be in Japanese since they're coming from Japan and all, so you're probably going to need an English translation to actually understand them. Thankfully there is an English translation out there, at least for the Rockman 11 manga. Otherwise, you can at least enjoy the pretty pictures. What's more, the Super Special Rare compilation is also going to include a brand new one-shot manga from Ryo Takamasaki, which is roughly titled Rockman EXE Forte The Time of Reunion. Well, doesn't that fit in with the theme of this Mega News Roundup today? <laughs> Anyway, some general information about the new book, it's going to be 216 pages long. The standard edition will go for 1,980 yen, whereas there will be a limited set that will have 5 duplicate original drawings and that one goes for 3,630 yen. And both of these will be shipping in January of 2022, so nice way to start off the year. However, keep in mind, we will put links to these in the description below. But, these are from Japan, so you may need a proxy in order to actually ship them to your home region. As far as I'm seeing, it doesn't look like Fukon actually ships worldwide. And the last manga update we have for today is Rockman Sun Chapter 13 is now available to read, at least for anyone who understands Japanese. And this one is a little more serious and action packed in tone, as Rockman Sun actually goes up against two robots with mass-produced busters of their own. And of course, Gutsman makes an appearance too! Dun if you want to check it out, link in the description below as always. Guys, that's gonna do it for today's Mega News Roundup. Once again, I just want to thank all of you for watching, for supporting the channel, and everything that we do. It really means a lot to us. Thank you also to our channel members, including GA Class supporters, Adrian Cauldron, LML123, Chaos Bankai, Vince Crystals, Rico Syndrome, and Austin Boofer. Yeah, seriously guys, thank you so much. Especially as yesterday, the Shadowrock CX channel has officially turned 13 years old. Isn't that wild? It's a teenager now. <laughs> and hey, we definitely wouldn't be here 13 years later without your support. So we really are thankful for all of you guys do for us. You guys are the lifeblood of the channel. So seriously, thank you. And for more on Mega Man and other things Mega-esque, stay tuned to Shadowrock ZX. We'll see you this Wednesday for the dive stream that is happening on schedule this week, and all the usual shenanigans you would often expect from us. Until then, rock on, and have a great day or night.